you know, you could make a case, and I do all the time, about the validity of HDR uh, recording on the set. I think it's pretty unnecessary. I think it's a, it's a safety thing, and it comes from a lot of computer scientists saying, hey, you know, let's get this, and it's an exact match, and, and, late, you know, and we can do anything with it later on. What they're actually doing is delaying the decision. And I think, like a director and a cameraman makes the decision on the set, there's nothing wrong with making a decision and living with it. It means you have to focus more at that time, make that decision to move on. So the way I like to treat this stuff is, and, this, and I'm in a minority in the industry doing this, in the effects industry at least, is you, you know what you want when you go in there and you respond quickly to the, to the director and the cameraman and the set and all that sort of stuff. So say coming to the creature sequence in this, you've got all your close-ups, you've got some medium shots, the wide shots, you know Larry had no time to light anything. You know there was no creature in there for him. You don't ask him to, but you also don't take the reference and say this means anything, because it doesn't. Any sort of HDR you know, photos of the entire environment that you're going to use later on really mean virtually nothing at that point. You can make a case that, oh, it does. But you know, those shots in a real movie might be shot three days later. They may, the camera would be farther back shooting a bigger area, say. They would have completely relit for that area. And of course, because they never, they never shot those, they never did any of those things. And I think you just trust your eyes. So what I do is when I get back, we, ha we always have to make up newer wide shots. And we do them with models or CG and, and caves. And then we put the creature in. I make those decisions based on my, with my eyes. I look at the, other, the rest of the sequence. I look at at what dramatically I want to see. Do I want this corner to be brighter? Do I want it to be darker? Do I want the light to come from down here or up there? But you sort of build it up uh, as opposed to sort of like taking all this data and throwing some of it away, which I think is kind of backwards. And I know that a lot of good cameramen say that that's actually the wrong way to work, that it, people used to light things and they would take the light away to look good. Other guys say, no, that's not the way to do it. You start with nothing and you add it where you need it. And that's more of my way of doing it. And I think that coming in with what you think is this useful data keeps you from, from creating the shot from nothing as opposed to taking it away. I think it's, it's important for the effect supervisor to be on the set and to talk to the DP and even more than that, look at what he's doing as much as you can. Doesn't mean he's there all the time, but he knows the, the style of instruments he's got. He knows how, how he's cheating on every single shot to get that shot to be the best. And yet, when you see it in the movie, it looks like there was no cheating done at all. And, what, and that cheating is fine. That's not, that's not really cheating, it's art. And you're trying to make each shot perfect, you know? And I think that that's just something that's kind of been lost by the idea of let's get all this data on the set and let's come back and this will, and then we put it on our CG character and, and then we say things like that's our starting point. Now we'll go in and light it to look right. I think too many people think that's also the ending point. Yeah, I think we've gone this sort of way because of the, there's not enough people that have the time to learn how to do it another way. This way you can, you can kind of turn into a factory. You can get the data on the set, you can bring it back, you can, uh, people can learn how just to bring that data in without having to know how to light it, and you're 50% there, or whatever. That's, I think that's the reason it's in place. I think we need, though, to start taking time to look at why, uh, why we're doing it in the first place, and how we do it to look better. You know, I, and I've done a lot of research on this. I'm kind of writing a book on this, on the subject. And I think what came in with rotoscoping, for example, in Snow White, and at the Fleischer Studios in the late 30s for animation was exactly the same problem we've got right now. There were, there were artists that were great animators, but there were maybe only 10 of them at Disney. And suddenly he wants to do a live action film or he wants to do 20 shorts a year instead of three shorts a year. And you somehow have to, have to figure out a way to get the quality level up. And rotoscoping was a way of doing that that worked because it, it took the timing of the performance off, off the animators area and into the shoot, the, the reference shoot that was done with a director and live actors. So they wouldn't do the whole movie that way, but they would do an awful lot of it that way. And I think that's what we're kind of at right now. And I think when you get into certain types of film, it's really, it's really good to be able to bring that back if you're dealing with like an Iron Man kind of character with a lot of reflectivity on it and you want to get it to fit into the plate 
and you have to do it all CG, having good data of and a good global illumination representation of what the set was like is really, really valuable. But it should never be looked at as like any more than 20% of what you need to do to get that lighting to look right. I think having a, you've got to have a really good lighting package that mimics the tools, but it's all how you apply them. And, and do, whether you start out with putting on this sort of, let's take the real world and put it in here, now let's light it. You know, I, I'm not so sure that's really the way to do it. Again, that's taking things back. If, if you put the real world on there and you're off in, your, in the data, anywhere in the process that you collected, then you're gonna go in with something wrong. Like say it's everything's a little bit too bright, say there's, you've got HDR, right? But the HDR is really not yet mirroring what the real world's like. It's, it still is less than what the difference between the sun and the darkest is, you know? So you are kind of compressing things in there. And then do you even have, you know, is your CG surface as real as, as what that a, a real creature would look like out there, for example? It probably isn't, and that's what you're gonna then work on for the next week or so to get it to look the same. But if you start out with something that's not right, that's too bright, that's too compressed in tone, and you start adding your, your, your accurate movie lights, which is good, it's like, it's, it's the same thing again about kind of, you, you have to subtract stuff and fiddle with stuff to look right as opposed to just building it up to look right. And to me, I think some of the best lighting was done before any of this stuff has really been developed. We used to like go in and look at the backgrounds and we shoot, shot references on the plate of little figures in there and we could look at it and we could kind of relight in our heads what to do and we would build it up with the old tools from scratch and there was more of an art to it than a science to it. And a cameraman, whenever he, whenever he changes cameras, you don't leave the lights in the same place. You know, there's, for example, there's negative lighting. You know, guys will go in with 20 by 20 blacks and put up, not bounce light, blacks to keep light off of one, and daylight to keep light off of one side of the face for a close-up, and he, not, he wouldn't do it in the wide shot. How is anybody, when they're doing the HDR, is gonna know that, because that might not have even been shot out there, and an effects facility wouldn't even know that cameramen are doing something like that. So I, I just think that, I think we're kind of too far ahead of ourselves now, and we need to but marry. what you're referring to is like, for example, changing the contrast ratio by changing the quality of light. Mm -hmm. uh, but we would take the plates and then alter the, the lighting on the plates. We would darken corners, we would take highlights off of things on the real plates to focus your attention at something that, that before may not have seemed important when they shot the plate, but seemed important to me when we were compositing everything into the plate. And often because the DP doesn't quite know what part of the shot's gonna be used, he can't really figure everything out. He can get really close, and then we come in and do the final you know, readjustment of it. 